Hey, this is Vu, and today I'm going to take a look at New Dust 2, aka Mirage, and how to win on it. So first of all, most people do seem to understand that mid control is really important. However, a lot of people seem to think mid control is all you need, and they'll kind of sit around chair or top boxes until 30 seconds left in the round and hope the enemy just runs into them and dies. But instead, what you really need is you need deep mid control. And that means you want control of connector, and you want control of ladder, because without that, you can have CTs that are in position to really pick you off with flash peaks and they have a lot of information as well you know a player in ladder can really good get good information on what you're doing and he can be a quick rotate over to the a side and you really don't want that type of thing happening so you want to get control of that and the easiest way to do so with the standard 131 mid control is you usually want to send two players top mid with this smoke and one player underpass and the two players top mid they'll throw that smoke they'll toss a molly in towards connector as well and and they'll toss a couple of flashes high, potentially off that wall there, uh, potentially off the box uh, or behind them. And they get out to the box here because as soon as you get to the box here, you've created an extra avenue or angle you can shoot at your opponents from. And you're pretty safe from any sort of mid aggressions. Then it's just deep mid you have to worry about. And, you know, a window smoke can work pretty effectively <laughs> in this sort of situation. Uh, you can toss a smoke in a window. Wow. You can toss a smoke in a window uh, from the top mid player, and you can have this underpass player who's important just to add an extra angle from which you can shoot at your opponents, you can come here and you can toss a top connector smoke. And the reason you really want the top connector smoke is because now they can't shoot at you from A as you head up cat, and now really connector is basically a death trap. There's no really comfortable angles to be playing in. So you can get a player in con, and you can easily have a player move their way up cat, and you can toss a flash in a to uh, ladder and easily take control of ladder as well and once you've got that you can pretty much go anywhere you've got pretty much every option left open in the book but the most common of those would be the a split similar to how on dust 2 you kind of default to the mid b split on mirage you usually default to the a split because uh, this is the easier site to take in general and it's just a lot less awkward to deal with than the b split it's a lot easier to convince your teammates to do now with that being said one of the things you want to think about when you're doing this default especially if you don't want to be the mid player is what is kind of the new meta which is shifting from 131 to kind of a 230 because the odds are that someone pushes B uh, they're not that high and you can sometimes have your underpass player put some pressure there as well and you know you don't want to do this every round but the idea is that there's very few angles on the a bomb site that can deal with both ramp and palace effectively as a solo a player and because most ct sides run a 131 especially in pugs they're going to have a fairly solo a player and when mid pressure is put down the connector player ends up with a very linear rotation into con trying to pressure and you can isolate and attack the a player so a lot of teams are, are running this kind of idea that you run doubled up on A quite often on the T side so that you can punish that A side player and you can make sure the CT aggressions, which you probably don't see all that often in matchmaking, don't work that well against you either. So definitely something to consider. Now, of course, once in a while, you're going to play a game where mid control doesn't work. And while it's the most important thing to go for, if you want to set up consistent success, you should have an idea of what else you can do on the map. And one thing that is really underrated on this map actually is the spawn system, you know, because although you don't necessarily beat the CTs to a location other than, you know, the mid spawn, you do have spawns that can very drastically change up the timing of you getting to an angle. And because of that, you can definitely throw off CTs in terms of their nade timing and catch them off guard. So a good example is when you get, you know, multiple good A spawns, you can have something like this where you run quickly over to A can toss a flash off the wall here and kind of swing out quickly. And of course, CTs can deal with that by tossing down a molly early, but a lot of the time CTs want to hold onto their molly as long as possible because they want to be able to use it for its intended purpose if they can which means sometimes you're going to walk your way out with a quick swing and catch people completely off guard for easy kills and that's something you can do in a couple of different angles you can do that of course towards ramp you can have the good palace spawn if you have an op and the mid spawn which people typically use for mid because 
obviously, can also be used as a B spawn because if you have an op, you can actually kind of get a really good aggressive timing onto CTs that might be a bit delayed getting to van here, jumping across, you can oftentimes catch them off guard. And you can get some free kills off of that type of play whenever you can. Now the other thing to realize is that when you have that B spawn, a lot of teams you've seen probably in the pro scene have been running the B execute, the fast one, right? Where you smoke off, get right, get left, and you toss flashes over and attack. Well, that would be perfect to know, however, probably in a solo queue game, in a pug or matchmaking game, you're not going to be running that type of thing, right? So the two things you should keep in mind if you are running that type of thing, number one is this flash here, which lands deep enough that it'll catch a player that's get right and catch a player that's jail, which a lot of flashes won't catch both or even either of those players a lot of the time. And you need to realize that it's very important to be pushing out and swinging on the bomb site here around the side. If you've ever played against a CT side that has an opper, just kind of sit behind the site and pick players off and get three or four kills, a lot of the time in pro games that would be because the CTs dealt with this push to the side of the site, but in matchmaking it's because nobody did this push to the side of the site. And although it is super scary and risky, it's incredibly necessary, and without it you're not going to have a great time attacking the B bomb site and of course you could throw a molly off the wall that can kind of deal with that but it's just not nearly as good as actually getting a player pushed up in the back of site that can deal with a lot of different angles and have a pretty good after plant spot already so you want to make sure that you're not just doing the standard kind of baity sit back over here and and work picks idea or going out to van and work picks idea or sitting in the window and work picks idea you want to be trying to force yourself to push quickly out if you're one of the first couple of spawns and hopefully a teammate will follow and you'll have an actually pretty decent B take instead of what you usually see teams doing. Now if you want to hit B but you don't want to rush, one of the things you should realize is actually not a bad spot to attack solo. While it is a spot that you would not necessarily think of that way, if you look at it, most of the initial angles at B are angles you can peek in a linear fashion, and especially because they've lowered the lip here, it means it's harder for players or more dangerous for them to jump spot, and they're more likely to be playing one of these angles that you can walk out and solo clear. So if you want to go for the pick early and you don't don't get that early pick when you have the spawn, you can continue to work it as these angles for the most part are one by one clearable up until a certain point. And there's a decent chance someone's going to be holding one of these angles at some point because they don't want to be jump spotting. So especially until people or if people start hard doubling up on B, you have a decent ability to work into it and if all else fails that's something you can certainly try to do. Now the final thing to realize is the obvious a execute that most people do know right so you've got the smoke towards ct and this is different from the ones most you mostly you'll see uh you can throw that or you can throw it from here as well but i can never remember exactly how to throw this one perfectly you've got the smoke for stairs and then you've got the smoke for jungle as well of course but this is something I don't necessarily think people should be running all that often. I think this one gets overused way too much, especially in lower rank matchmaking, where people kind of just default into A executing every round. In reality, you want to be trying to get a good mid default going as much as possible because that's where you're going to find consistent success and you only want to be running that a execute if something really tells you that an a execute is a good idea and especially when you're in matchmaking similar to the idea that in the b execute people don't usually swing wide in the a execute people don't usually swing wide either and you kind of end up in a situation quite often where your smokes are dissipating and you don't have a bomb plant yet and you're in a very awkward spot so certainly would recommend not doing it too often, but if you do, just make sure you're tossing the molly towards bench and make sure you do have someone that's, you know, pushing out and swinging the bomb site and not just trying to sit back here at Tetris and sit in this corner here, holding angles, doing absolutely nothing. Just get things done and try and actually push up on the bomb site as quickly as possible. The more you catch players off guard on this map, the more you're going to get free kills. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped. Oh, look at this bench. Look at that support underneath this bench. How is this able to carry me? Oh, 
That's the Patreon support holding up Vu, propping up the channel, propping up this guy that makes videos. Is you know supporting the content, supporting the creator, helping him out, holding him up. You know, supporting this guy right here, right here, holding the holding him up. Patreon.com/slash VuCSGo.